Hello everyone, happy morning, a very good morning. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. Uh, a quick nod whether the audio visual is all good. Yes, I, I believe I'm audible and visible, everyone. Uh, so here we are having a KBMD. Uh, KBMD basically is called MD, which is uh, MCQ discussions, important MCQs. And um, with some concepts, with some tricks is what we are going to learn in the today's session. Apart from that, we have uh, another class today at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, which is uh, basically the short short INICT, the ongoing course. And here we are discussing the previous year questions of uh, INICT that have been asked, right? So just to revise and reinforce the topics. So uh, we have another class today at 5 p.m. Now, starting with the today's session, before that, few updates on what's happening on the platform. So we have uh, an Academy mega savings and mega extension offer where you get 25% off on your subscription. Along with that, you get the vitals, that is the recorded classes, which are recorded in the studio. And you get the notes, the physical notes as well, if you take a subscription six months and above, right? And so basically, if you see, you get a one-year subscription at around 17K. And you can use the code Dr. Nikita while subscribing. For the students who are preparing for uh, NEET PG 2024 or the next exam, uh, for the next year, we have an ongoing course for you as well. And... Uh, also for the students appearing for FMG, we have the last mile FMG preparation batch, which is now available at only around 2K at the Unacademy store. Apart from that, uh, with the ongoing offer, you can also take the short short uh, INICT course at just 2.5K. And uh, this is what you will also have the access to the short short need PG also that would be available here, right? So that was the update happening on the platform. Now, starting with the discussion of the questions, tell me what do you think would be the answer to this one? Which of the following points will you basically see that there would be maximum sensitivity detection for the disease? Will it be point A, B, C, D, E? At which point will we have the maximum sensitivity? Yes. What do you think would be the answer to this one? Waiting for the answers. I hope I'm able to see the live chat. Okay. Uh, very good. Uh, Bindu Madhavi, absolutely correct. It is the point A. Okay. This is the point A where we will have the maximum sensitivity. So maximum sensitivity is point A. And can you tell me where do we have the maximum specificity? At what point do we have the maximum specificity? Maximum specificity is going to be E or is it going to be C? That is where I thought that we will get confused there. Remember, the maximum specificity point is this. So basically, the two overlapping wale points, jo hai, it is not E, where the normal ka graph is ending. That is where you will have the maximum specificity. Okay. Specificity basically detects your true negative. Okay. It detects your true negative. Sensitivity detects the true positive right so where the graph of the disease is starting that is where we will have sensitivity where the graph of the negative is ending the normal is ending that is where we will have specificity remember it is a and it is point c so this graph basically you get a graph like this which talks about the cutoff of a test so they give you that this is the cutoff if we reduce the cutoff what increases and what decreases if we reduce the cut off, sensitivity decreases, specificity increases, both increases, both decreases, what happens? 
remember the trick here to remember is when we are going to the left that means the negative side okay that's the negative n n n it is sensitivity which increases it is negative predictive value which increases specificity decreases when you take the cutoff to the right increasing the cutoff positive side is specificity and the positive predictive value which increases the sensitivity increases okay so decreasing will increase the sensitivity increasing the cutoff will increase the specificity is this clear with everyone yes this is the first question that we are discussing see when you are taking the cutoff to d and you are taking the cutoff to e you are also basically including so if this is the cutoff right so what is happening what is increasing is the diseased population which is coming into the negative right so that is false negative is also increasing when the false negative is increasing the sensitivity is decreasing okay so the best points is these points okay the c point is for the specificity the a point is for sensitivity with the less false results okay with the less false results okay clear with everyone Campylobacter is this clear? So when you decrease the cutoff, I just want you to remember the trick also here. When you decrease the cutoff, that means you are going towards the negative side. N N N N means a sensitivity contains N increases. Negative predictive value increases. When you increase the cutoff going towards the positive side, the specificity increases and the positive predictive value also increases. Okay. Going on to the next one, what do you think would be the answer to this question? Which of the following causes is most consistent with this clinical situation? Okay, so let's have a look at this. So basically, this is a question related to your acid-base disorders. You see that the blood pH is 7.4, the CO2 is 50 and the bicarbonate is 41, right? So uh, please increase uh, your, uh, uh, you know, the video quality. That will make the slides clear. On my end also, I see the quality is less and uh, that is why you are not seeing it clearly. Make it 360 pixels, you'll be able to see that. Okay, right. So let's have a look at these questions here. First of all, in the acid-base disorders, the first thing you look for is pH. The normal value of pH is 7.4. The normal value of bicarbonate is 24. The normal value of PCO2 is 40. So remember, all the 4, 4 and 4 are the normal values. So pH less than 7.4, this will be acidosis. This will be alkalosis. Okay, so remember that. Here the pH is 7.48, the pH is increased, that means this is alkalosis. Anyways, all the options already mentioned that it is alkalosis. Next, whether it is metabolic or it is respiratory alkalosis, this is basically after the diuretic therapy, then we are seeing this acid-based disorders. There is no respiratory problem here. So you rule out option B and you rule out option D, it's not a respiratory alkalosis, it is metabolic alkalosis. Second point, you also know that acetazolamide, aceta is acida, it causes acidosis, it does not cause alkalosis, so even this option is out, right? So automatically, even by ruling out the options, you come to the answer, even without solving it like a proper way, whether it is metabolic or it is respiratory. Now coming to this question, the trick that we have, the very important mnemonic is rho, that means in respiratory, it is opposite. In metabolic, it is equal. In metabolic, it is equal. So, in respiratory, the pH change and the bicarbonate PCO2 changes, they go in the opposite direction. 
in metabolic all go in the same direction so whenever you have all decreased or all increased so remember that it is basically your metabolic this is what we see here the bicarbonate is 41 increased the carbon dioxide is 50 which is increased so this is all increased so this becomes your metabolic alkalosis so this is hydrochlorothiazide induced metabolic alkalosis and also remember this point many times we have discussed alkalosis is all k loss so generally it is associated with hypokalemia so that is why hydrochlorothiazide which causes hypokalemia can cause metabolic alkalosis which are the diuretics which cause acidosis which are the diuretics causing acidosis remember acidazolamide acidosis is acetazolamide and we have the next one which is your potassium sparing diuretics which increase the potassium so you have spironolactone or vagera they will cause your acidosis okay they will cause acidosis tell me examples where acidosis is associated with hypokalemia we said that generally hypokalemia is alkalosis but where do you have acidosis with hypokalemia remember rta type which rtas have hypokalemia one and two rta type four very very important remember is hyperkalemia it is hyperkalemia rta type four is hyperkalemia okay so that is rta type one and rta type two which have acidosis with hypokalemia okay so this was about this question thinking logically you could have solved this question going on to the next one now What do you think would be the answer to this one? What do you think is the answer to this one? Majority of you think B. Why do you think this is B? Why do you think this is B here? Are you thinking of Wilson's disease here? No. Basically, the diagnosis here, this is an 8th day old premature neonate and appearing floppy and the skin appears yellow, the sclera is yellow. All of that this is basically we are talking about a jaundice neonatal we are talking about the jaundice in the neonate this is not your wilson's disease this is jaundice right now bilirubin in the blood travels binding to albumin what binds the bilirubin is the albumin so when the albumin binds the bilirubin the size increasing it cannot cross the blood brain barrier so this compound cannot cross the blood brain barrier but when it is free bilirubin without the albumin, it can cross the blood-brain barrier. So whenever the albumin levels decrease, the bilirubin is free and it can cross and it can cause carnicterus. So in a patient, in a baby of jaundice, when the floppy is mentioned, basically it indicates carnicterus. It indicates the development of carnicterus. So low levels of albumin basically will increase the bilirubin, free bilirubin levels. And that is why the carnicterus will be precipitated. Which drugs given in the neonate can cause a carnicterus? It is sulfonamides. Okay, which drug given in the neonate can cause, uh, okay, it can cause uh, basically your uh, carnicterus is sulfonamides because sulfonamides are the drugs which have high plasma protein binding. Right, so what do they do? They displace the bilirubin and they occupy the site with the albumin so again the albumin gets uh, the albumin is occupied by sulfonamides few points about uh, the neonatal the congenital jaundice which is a conjugated one doctors are conjugated dubin johnson and rotors are conjugated in which of these do you have the black liver 
In which of these do you have the black liver? Remember, black liver is the dark liver. Black liver is the dark liver. And it is dark is your Dubin Johnson. Okay, that is Dubin Johnson, which is the black liver. Uh, next one, in which of these there is highest risk of carnicterus? Which congenital hyperbilirubinemia you have the highest risk of carnicterus? It is Krigler Najar type 1 because type 1 is the one which is the most severe form. Okay, that's the most severe form. There is complete absence of UGT1A1. Okay, there is complete absence of UGT1A1. And the drug contraindicated in Krigler Najar, the anti cancer drug contraindicated is irinotecan because it requires UGT1A1 for the metabolism. Okay, otherwise there will be toxicity. So, this is for Krigler Najar. And which is the most benign one? Gilbert. Remember, Gilbert is the one which is the most benign, only gets precipitated by uh, sepsis or uh, infections and all of that. Okay. So, these are some of the important points for congenital hyperbilirubinemia. Going on to the next question now, what do you think will be the answer to this one? Very good. Absolutely right. This is the page edge disease. Because what are you seeing here? Most important is the image is showing. What is the x-ray showing? What is the x-ray showing here? It is the cotton wool skull. Okay, the white, white areas like the cotton wool. It is a cotton wool skull. And the question mentions that he cannot wear his favorite fitted baseball hat no longer fits that means the skull size is increased that is one of the important history here look at the age group it's a 55 year old man page it comes in the elderly there will be bone pain that will be present right what are the other clinical features that we have there can be snhl also because page it causes cortical thickening that compresses the foramina in the skull right so that causes nerve compression okay that causes nerve compression remember that a uh, pages disease is an elderly patient pages is a blastic or lytic pages is both blastic plus lytic it has a mixed phase as well so in the lytic phase what are the various radiological signs that we see in pages that is the that is the blade of grass appearance. Okay, that's the blade of grass appearance. The lytic lesion goes towards the shaft. What else do we have is the, what kind of vertebra? P for P. Remember, the cortical thickening causes the picture frame vertebra. Okay, we get the picture frame vertebra that is seen in pages. You get cotton wool skull and you also get osteoporosis circumscripta osteoporosis circumscripta is what we see tam shanter skull is seen with the frontal bossing like a falling hat the tam shanter skull is seen very very important remember in pages what levels increase out of calcium phosphate and alkaline phosphatase what levels increase in pages Yes, absolutely right. It is only the increase in alkaline phosphatase. The calcium and phosphate is normal. Okay, the calcium and phosphate is normal. So remember all these important points for pages. It can also present with heart failure because of those fistula in the bone, the pressure on the heart, then it can also lead to heart failure. Okay, this is pages. In ankylosing spondylitis, it would be a relatively young patient with morning stiffness. Because it is inflammatory arthritis and you, the question also mentions about uveitis because that is the extra articular manifestation there. Right. So, remember all these important points for pages. 
sacroiliitis absolutely right the low back ache next one what do you think would be the answer to this one Very good. Absolutely right, Bindu. The correct answer here is persistent leukocytosis. Okay, this is persistent leukocytosis is what is the answer here. Why is it persistent leukocytosis? Because what is the diagnosis that you have made here? What diagnosis are we thinking here? right immunodeficiency disorder but which immunodeficiency disorder are we thinking here this is not chronic granulomatous disease very good this is leukocyte adhesion deficiency now what tells me that this is leukocyte adhesion deficiency the history that it is non purulent infections no purulence is a very very important keyword here for lad right so what happens in leukocyte adhesion deficiency there's a defect in the adhesion and the leukocytes and neutrophils going towards the site of infection is not there so there is no pus right this is lad type 1 where there is adhesion defect what cd marker it is it is cd 18 which is beta integrin okay which is beta integrin which is responsible for adhesion what do you have in lad 2 and lad 3 so look at this one first one the rolling right the rolling of the wbc it is the defect leads to your lad2 if the 3 is your lad3 is the activation which is basically the defect the deficiency of kinlin that is activation and the final one is the adhesion that is your lad1 okay that is your lad1 which is beta integrin okay which is beta integrin which is responsible for adhesion and then the wbcs go out okay then the wbcs go out theek hai clear with everyone what molecule has a role in uh, rolling your previous inict aims exam question what do you have which molecule plays a role in uh, rolling look at this one the green color one here basically this is selectin So remember selectin plays a role in rolling p q r s so it is r and s in rolling we have selectin p cam is not here p cam comes in your p cam is your for what p cam is what cd molecule it is cd31 and it is responsible for this migration the trans migration is where the p cam cd31 has a role okay diapedesis that is your trans migration okay that's your trans migration is where the pcam1 comes okay so remember that this is lad1 and lad1 is your cd18 integrin defect adhesion defect so all the leukocytes are within the blood itself that means the wbc count is high okay the wbc count is high so the patient is at risk of persistent leukocytosis this is lad what other history do we have in lad delayed the stump fall off that stump the umbilical stump does not fall off easily looking at the other options tell me where do you have infection following live virus vaccines is common when we have t cell deficiency infection with neisseria is common when we have terminal complement deficiency okay when we have terminal complement deficiency small or absent lymph nodes is your brutens a gamma globulinemia and very important where do you have your thrombocytopenia and eczema thrombocytopenia and eczema is your triad of tie triad of tie which is seen in viscot albrecht syndrome 
thrombocytopenia, infections, and eczema. That is Viscott Aldrich syndrome. Okay, that is Viscott Aldrich syndrome, which is X linked recessive, and you get microplatelets here. Okay, and you get microplatelets here. Right? Clear with everyone? So remember, this is going to be your non purulent infections. Non purulent infections. Going on to the next one, this is an uh, uh, easy one, though the question seems very lengthy, but there is this one key word, very, very important. Very good. This keyword, the HLA-B157-5707 positive. Positive. So what is contraindicated is abacavir. Okay, remember that it is abacavir. When I say HLA A B, HLA B. So remember the A B is abacavir, which is contraindicated when this is your HLA 57 positive. Right? A uh, few important points in HIV drugs, which is the one which has renal stones associated. Renal stones is indenavir. Okay, renal stones is indenavir. Next, what do we have is which one causes ICH, the intracranial hemorrhage? Intracranial hemorrhage causing uh, HIV drug? Intracranial hemorrhage. Right? It is tipranavir. So, right, we remember it as tip tip karke barse khun, tip tip barsa khun in the brain. So, remember it is pranavir which causes ICH, which causes ICH. Which HIV drug should not be combined with gancyclovir? Which HIV drug should not be combined with gancyclovir? Zidobudine because both of these basically cause bone marrow suppression. Now, answer ifavirens ke saath, the side effect that we have is vivid dreams. Vivid dreams is the side effect with ifavirens. Which one has pigmentation? The nail pigmentation and the palmer hyperpigmentation. Which of these has pigmentation? The nail pigmentation is zidobudine. The palmer hyperpigmentation, your INICT question is m Okay, this m Nail is zidobudine and the palmer is m Okay, palmer is m Okay. So, remember all these important points for your HIV drugs. And which HIV drugs cause uh, increase in CPK levels? Remember the integrase inhibitors, they increase the CPK levels. Right? They can cause myopathy. So, they can increase the CPK levels. Okay? With nevirapin, which is a NNRTI, the side effect that we have is rash and hepatotoxicity. With nevirapin, it is rash and hepatotoxicity. Okay. Now, going on to the next questions here. What do you think is the content of the given triangle? No. No, Dr. Reformer, it is not A. It is not A. Right. That is the suprascapular nerve. Okay. That is the suprascapular nerve. Because what triangle has been shown here? First, this muscle here is the sternocleidomastoid. What is this muscle here, guys? What is this muscle that we are seeing here? What is this muscle here? This is the omohyoid muscle dividing the posterior triangle of the neck. That is omohyoid. Okay, that is omohyoid. Hyoid pe ja hai ya scapula pe ja hai. This is omohyoid. Digastric idhar hota hai. Okay, digastric is here. Mastoid se yaha pe. Right, this is omohyoid. So, this posterior triangle, the triangle behind the sternocleidomastoid is the posterior triangle. This is the subclavian triangle that we have there. And this one is the occipital triangle. 
So we have the subclavian or the supraclavicular and the occipital triangle. Subclavian triangle, we have the subclavian artery, but not the second part of the subclavian artery. It is the third part of the subclavian artery. We do have the jugular vein here, but not the internal jugular vein. The terminal part of the external jugular vein is what we have here. Dorsal scapular nerve goes behind the dorsally. It is the occipital triangle, the posterior triangle, occipital triangle. So the answer here is suprascapular nerve. Okay, the suprascapular nerve. So the trunks of the brachial plexus basically go from here, right? What branches come from the trunk of the brachial plexus? Remember, the trunk is in the middle, above that supra, below that sub. So, it is suprascapular nerve and your nerve to subclavius. Suprascapular and nerve to subclavius come from the trunk of the brachial plexus, which go through this subclavian triangle, okay, which go through this subclavian triangle, okay? Yes, absolutely right. So remember that it is the third part of the subclavian artery. It is the external jugular vein, the suprascapular nerve, which is basically coming from the trunk. These are the contents of your subclavian triangle. The dorsal scapular is the occipital triangle. Dorsal scapular nerve supplies which muscles? Dorsal scapular nerve supplies which muscles? Yes. No. So that's why do not get confused. Remember, latissimus dorsi is thoracodorsal nerve. Latissimus dorsi is the thoracodorsal nerve. Latissimus dorsi is coming from the piche thorax wala part, thoracodorsal. Dorsal scapula, the muscles attached to the dorsal aspect of the scapula, the levator scapulae and the rhomboids. Okay, the levator scapulae and the rhomboids, these are supplied by your dorsal scapular nerve. Okay, attached to the medial border of the scapula. Uh, dorsally, you have these muscles supplied by the dorsal scapular nerve. Okay, dorsal scapular. All right, uh, just give me a minute. I'll connect the charger just a minute. <clears throat> yes, is this clear? Going on to the next one, which of these is not true about the WPW syndrome? Very good. Absolutely right. It is not the prolonged PR that we see in WPW syndrome. So, uh, WPW syndrome basically is the accessory bundle that we have bypassing the AV node. That is the bundle of Kent that we have. So, it is faster conducting. So, the PR is decreased. The AV node conduction time, the time taken for the impulse to go from atrium to ventricle is decreased. So, that is the decrease in the PR. It is short PR rather than the long PR. Where do you see wrong PR is basically suggestive of AV block, right? AV block basically is long PR. And what do we have is uh, there is delta wave because the bundle of Kent exciting the ventricle, the QRS complex, the QRS complex, it is sloping like this. The QRS is wide because it is abnormal excitation of the ventricle, increases the QRS. Digoxin is contraindicated. Why? Because digoxin is a drug which causes AV block. It increases the refractory period in the AV node. So when you block the AV, so automatically this bundle of Kent will get more dominant. Okay, it will win and it will get more dominant. That is why digoxin. Basically, any AV block causing drug is contraindicated. So, Campylobacter, be it calcium channel blocker, be it beta blocker, right? They are contraindicated because we do not want to block the AV. Okay, we do not want to block the AV there. 
so it is contraindicated there okay it is contraindicated we use uh, procainamide in the treatment of uh, wpw syndrome the uh, gold standard treatment is basically going to be the ablation of the accessory pathway the bundle of kent because that is what is responsible for it right so the final the gold standard treatment is ablation so remember this is your wpw syndrome where you have short pr rather than the long pr going on to the next question where do you have pseudo p pulmonale very good absolutely right pseudo p pulmonale is seen in hypokalemia so remember the changes of potassium in the ecg when the potassium decreases potassium basically is responsible for repolarization in the ecg the repolarization is the t wave so when the potassium decreases the t wave decreases right when the potassium decreases the t wave decreases and when the t wave decreases opposite happens with the p wave the p wave is going to increase when the increase in the p wave is basically your p pulmonale right p to p is your p pulmonale this is pseudo because actually the p pulmonale is seen in right atrial enlargement right here there's no right atrial enlargement so it is called as pseudo p pulmonale and also remember with decreased potassium that is under kalemia that is uk with under kalemia we see the u wave okay with under kalemia we see the u wave so u wave is seen so what are the changes with uh, hypokalemia there is u wave there is pseudo p pulmonale there is decreased t there is increased p right where do you see sine wave pattern do you see sine wave pattern in hyperkalemia yes sine wave pattern is seen in severe hyperkalemia okay it is seen in severe hyperkalemia we see the sine wave pattern okay in severe hyperkalemia right what do you see with hypocalcemia what is the ecg change with hypocalcemia calcium basically qt is what is changed when the calcium is less the qt is prolonged when the calcium is more the qt is short so long qt and short qt will be the effect with hypocalcemia uh, basically with the calcium levels the qt will change and whenever there is qt prolongation it predisposes to torsades de pointis for which the drug of choice is magnesium sulfate okay for which the drug of choice is magnesium sulfate okay so look at this one what are the changes that we see with the hypokalemia basically you will see the u wave the t wave will go down and the p wave will become prominent okay the p wave will become prominent this is what we see okay going on to the next one according to ceap classification presence of edema is what ceap classification CAP, what is the edema? All right, it is C3. I hope all of you remember the mnemonic for CEAP classification. C is C the TV, TV Isha. TV Isha is the mnemonic that is CAP 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is telangiectasia, varicose veins, edema, skin changes, healed ulcer, active ulcer. Right. So remember that it is TV Isha, which is the mnemonic for your CEAP classification. It is TV Isha. Telangiectasia, varicose veins, so then you have uh, edema, skin changes, healed ulcer, active ulcer. So let's see is T, V, E, then you have the S, and then you have the H, and then you have the A. In your C4, C4A, Remember, A is eczema. Okay, A is eczema. So, it is C4A. Then you have atrophy blanche or dermatosclerosis. Die and by is C4B. C is corona flabactetica. Okay, C is corona flabactetica. That is your C. Okay, so this is your CAP classification. Again, asked very, very frequently in the exam. 
Next one, what is the tumor marker in this tumor? What is the tumor marker in this tumor? Is it AFP? Right. It is inhibit because the tumor that you are seeing here is not the yolk sac tumor. It is the granulosa cell tumor. Now, do not get confused between the granulosa cell tumor and the yolk sac tumor ka image. In yolk sac tumor, what body do we see? Remember, the mnemonic for yolk sac tumor is yes, G. Yes is ha, G in Hindi is ha. So, yolk sac tumor is also called as endodermal sinus tumor, right, which has Schiller dual bodies, also called as glomeruloid body. And in that, you will actually see the glomerulus jessa. You will see a clear space here. There will be a parietal layer and there will be a visceral layer. Here, you are seeing the pseudo rosate pattern. The layers of the cells that we have, there is no free space, blank space is not there, right? So, this is the pseudo rosate pattern. This is called as call exner bodies, okay? This is called as call exner bodies. So, remember, grannies call for a cup of coffee. So you would see the coffee bean and nucleus here. The coffee bean and nucleus is what we see here. And the tumor marker here is inhibin, which is inhibin B. Okay, inhibin B. Now, granulosa cell tumor. Uh, is it your uh, sex cord stromal tumor, epithelial tumor or a germ cell tumor? What kind of tumor is a granulosa cell tumor? granulosa cell so tell me in the classification of the ovarian tumors no it's not an epithelial tumor see this has been asked in the inict exam also epithelial tumor germ cell tumor and the sex cord stromal tumor okay so epithelium is your epithelium kaisa hota hai? either it can have those serous cells the mucinous cells right it could be clear cell serous mucinous clear and you have the bladder jessa transitional epithelium which is present in Brenner's. These are your epithelium. Germ cell basically related everything to the fetus, the development of the fetus and the germ layers. So germ layers may have endoderm, so endodermal sinus tumor which is the yolk sac tumor. Developing from all the three germ layers is the dermoid. Then you have placenta that is choriocarcinoma will be your germ cell tumor. When I say this germinoma, the term itself tells me it is germ cell tumor, right? So, these are your germ cell tumors. Sex cord stromal tumors, basically the fibrous tissue, that is fibroma, pica cells, the granulosa cells. These come under your sex cord stromal tumors. So, fibroma, thecoma, granulosa cell tumor, these come under sex cord stromal tumors. So, when I talk about the tumor markers, for epithelial tumors, the CA125 is for epithelial tumors. For germ cell fetus is alpha fetoprotein, except this germinoma also. For this germinoma, remember it is DPL, that is PLAP and LDH. For choriocarcinoma, it is HCG. For dermoid, we do not have. Okay. And for granulosa cell tumor, it is inhibin B. Okay. For granulosa cell tumor, it is inhibin B. Remember this DPL, Delhi Premier League, where for this germinoma, you have PLAP and you have LDH. Okay. Now, uh, in uh, which of these uh, do you see the Walthard cell nest? In which of these uh, do you see the Walthard cell nest? Kiska nest hota hai? Kiska nest hota hai? Bird ka. So remember, it is Brenner's, which has the Walthard cell nest is seen with Brenner's. Okay, Brenner's. Rocky Tansky protuberance. Rocky Tansky is dermoid, right? Rocky Tansky is dermoid, which will have hair, which will have teeth. So remember that any ovarian tumor containing fat, you should think of dermoid. Ovarian tumor containing fat, containing calcification, think of dermoid. Okay, think of dermoid. Very, very important. Okay. 
So uh, this is your pseudo rosette, the call exner bodies and your Schiller dual bodies in the yolk sac tumor, bulk third cell nest in the Brenner's tumors. Okay, this is for the ovarian tumors. Going on to the next one, what do you think is the diagnosis here? Is it Osgood Schlatter? Is it Kinbox? Is it Perthes? Is it Colos? Very good. It is Perthes. Even if you know the bones, still you will be able to identify this. Osgood Schlatter is the osteochondritis of TT. That is the tibial tuberosity. Okay, that is the tibial tuberosity is the Osgood Schlatter. In box is K ke baad aata hai L, it is lunate. While Kohler is rhyming with navicular. So, Kohler is navicular. Okay, Kohler is navicular. Perthes is proximal thigh. That is the femur head. Now, you are not seeing the tibial tuberosity here. You are not seeing the lunate here. You are not seeing the navicular here. So, of course, the answer is going to be Perthes. Because what is Perthes? Basically, the femoral head avian, idiopathic avian. So look at the head of the femur here and look at the head of the femur here, which is collapsed here. Okay, so this is basically Perthes. The idiopathic uh, avascular necrosis, that is your Perthes. Okay, this is Perthes. So, this is about your this question here. Going on to the next one. Which nerve is injured in this patient? What do you think which nerve is injured in this patient? Absolutely right. That is the median. You see the pointing index. Right, the Oshner's clasp test, the pointing index. So remember, for median nerve, it is your MNOP. So basically, for median nerve, we have MNOP. We have the Navin sign, the Kilo Navin sign, the Oshner's clasp test, and we have the various P's. That is the Pope Benediction hand. We have the pen test, very, very important. And we have the Pointing index, which is for the median nerve, and we have the ape, ape thumb deformity. So, all this is for median nerve. Remember alphabetically, MNOP, that is the Navin sign, the Oshner's clasp, and all the PPPs. Right. Tell me that in pen test, what muscle are you testing for in the pen test? What muscle are we testing for in the pen test? So, in the pen test, we ask the patient to touch the pen with the thumb. What muscle is that? Absolutely. That is the abductor pollicis. It is the abductor pollicis muscle that we are testing for. Remember, not the adductor pollicis. Because adductor pollicis is very, very important. It is supplied by the ulnar nerve. Adductor pollicis is supplied by the ulnar nerve and it is uh, what test do we use for this adductor pollicis then? Adductor pollicis is the book test or the froment sign. Okay, the book test or the froment sign is what we use for the adductor pollicis. Okay, it is the ulnar nerve. The other test for ulnar nerve we have seen uh, recently A, B, C, D, E. Alnar ke liye book test, card test, dorsal ke liye igawa test. Right, the book, the card and for the dorsal it is the igawa. These are the tests for the alnar nerve. Which nerve injury causes a wrist drop? Which nerve injury causes wrist drop? Absolutely right. Remember, drop is DR, doctor. That is the radial nerve. That is the radial nerve. And what splint then we use for the wrist drop? When the wrist is dropping, we want to take the wrist up. So that is the cock up splint. Okay, that is the cock up splint that is used for the radial nerve injury. When do we use the knuckle bender splint? This knuckle bender action 
is basically the L wala, the lumbricals ka action. When the lumbricals are paralyzed, the ulnar nerve palsy, we use the knuckle bender splint. Okay, the knuckle bender splint, lumbricals, the ulnar nerve palsy. Though the lumbricals are supplied by both ulnar and median together. Okay, by both ulnar and median together. Right. So that was about this one. Tell me the answer to this question now. All of the following are components of Hutchison's triad except. Very good. It is the conductive hearing loss which is not the component. We have SNHL which is the component of the Hutchison's triad. Hutchison's triad is seen in congenital syphilis. Okay, remember Hutchison's triad is seen in congenital syphilis. So, remember the triad is basically Gandhi ji ke teen bandar. We have Buramad dekho, Buramad bolo and Buramad suno. Absolutely right. So, Buramad dekho, interstitial keratitis. Buramad suno is SNHL and Buramad bolo is your Hutchison's teeth. Remember one of the question asked in INICT. These Hutchison's teeth are the incisors which are peg like incisors these are not the mulberry molars mulberry molars are not included in the hutchison's triad right and what is that rule called as in congenital syphilis where as the period increases with they are delayed the later pregnancies the risk of syphilis is less what is that rule called as remember that is the kasowitz rule another question Kasowitz rule is related to congenital syphilis. Kasowitz rule is related to congenital syphilis. So remember, Kasowitz rule is congenital syphilis. What do you have in congenital CMV and what do you have in congenital toxoplasmosis? So remember in CMV, V for ventricular, we have periventricular calcification. In CMV, we have periventricular calcification in toxo T4 T that is throughout. The, it is diffuse calcification. In CMV, very, very important. It's the most common cause of non-syndromic SNHL. CMV, 90% of the babies are asymptomatic. If the question is what is the most common clinical feature in congenital CMV? What is the most common clinical feature in congenital CMV? Yes. The most common is the petechiae. Okay, the most common feature is the petechiae. And what is the best sample for uh, diagnosing CMV? Remember, it is a urine sample. Okay, it is a urine sample, which is the best sample. In toxoplasma, you have calcification throughout. There is chorioretinitis, there is hydrocephalus, and what do you see in the fundus examination? Toxo is taxi. So that is headlight in fog appearance. Okay, toxo is taxi. That is headlight in fog appearance is what we have with toxoplasmosis. With CMV, remember C4C. With CMV, it is cottage cheese and pizza pie appearance. Okay, with CMV, it is cottage cheese and pizza pie appearance. Okay. And what do we have with uh, rubella? What do we have with congenital rubella? Rubella also has SNHL, very, very important. There is cataract and there is PDA, patent ductus arteriosus. And with the patent ductus arteriosus, the question will mention continuous murmur in the infraclavicular region. Continuous murmur in the infraclavicular region. Yes, you have the blueberry muffin rash. Okay, the blueberry muffin rash. What spots do you have in the palate with uh, rubella? Is it for dice spots, for dice spots, for shimmer spots? What do we have with rubella? It is for shimmer spots. Okay, what do we see on the palate are the four shimmer spots are seen. Okay, it is four shimmer spots. Where are the four dice spots and where are the fox for dice spots? For dice is the lip, that is the sebaceous glands and fox for dice is the axilla where we have the apocrine glands. Okay, that is the apocrine glands. 
Okay. So these are the various things. And for rubella, also remember in a girl with rubella, what lymph nodes are uh, classical in rubella? Remember, it is the posterior auricular lymph nodes. Okay, it is the posterior auricular lymph nodes. The occipital lymph nodes is what is classical with rubella. Tell me what lymph nodes are classical with syphilis? What lymph nodes are classical with syphilis? Syphilis is your epitrochlear lymph node. Okay, whenever it is epitrochlear lymph node, think of syphilis. Okay, then in that case, think of syphilis. Which is that condition, the fever with rash, where you have the rash which comes after the fever is gone. Rash comes after the fever is gone. Is suddenly the rash is coming. That is basically exanthem coming suddenly. That is called as exanthem subitum or it is roseola infantum. Okay, or it is roseola infantum. Exanthem subitum or roseola infantum. So suddenly the rash comes. Febrile seizures are also common here. Febrile seizures. Remember, this is your sixth day disease. Okay, this is your sixth disease which is caused by HHV6. HHV6, that is your sixth day disease, roseola infantum. Okay, that is roseola infant. Right, so I think, yes, that was about the today's discussion. Let us quickly uh, discuss whatever we have learned today and revise whatever we have learned today. So what do we have? When you decrease the cutoff negative, the sensitivity increases, the NPV increases. When you increase the cutoff, remember we are talking about this overlapping areas only, not going till the end. The specificity increases, the PPV increases. Next one, acetazolamide causes acidosis, hydrochlorothiazide causes alkalosis because of the potassium loss. This is metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. Next, when the albumin levels decrease in a neonate, so there's nothing to bind bilirubin, the bilirubin goes to the brain and the kernicterus can precipitate. So low levels of albumin are a risk for kernicterus, so are sulfonamides. Next one, when you have the cotton wool skull, the increased heart size, elderly patient, it is pages. The other features can be SNHL and heart failure. And in pages, remember the alkaline phosphatase levels increase. Okay, the alkaline phosphatase levels will increase. Next one, when you have no purulence, a lot of infections happening, but there is no pus. Remember, it is LAD. LAD1 is CD18, the beta integrin defect, which is required for addition. Delayed stump fall off is the other thing which is given here. Because the WBCs are not going out, it is your persistent leukocytosis which develops. So remember, LAD1 is addition defect. LAD2 is rolling valas and LAD3 is activation vala that is kindling. Next one, when you have HLAB5701 positive, a baka V should not be given. Here in your subclavian triangle, it is the third part of subclavian artery, the external jugular vein and suprascapular nerve, the trunks of the brachial plexus. Dorsal scapular nerve goes in the occipital triangle. WPW syndrome has a short PR. It does not have a long PR. Because of the accessory pathway, the QRS is wide, there's delta wave, and the AV blocker drugs are contraindicated. Pseudopulmonale, that is a tall P wave, that means the T wave is down, that means it is seen in hypokalemia, where you also see the U wave, okay, where you also see the U wave. CEAP classification is TVE shock, so it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the edema is your 3, okay, edema is 3. Next one, this is your pseudo rosette without the clear space. So, this is not Schiller du dual. Uh, this is called external body granulosa cell tumor. The tumor marker is inhibin B. It's a sex cord stromal tumor. The granulosa cell tumor is a sex cord stromal tumor. Can present with precautious puberty. Okay, it can present with precautious puberty. Next one, when perthes is your proximal thigh, that is femur head avian is perthes. And this is the Oshner's clasp. Remember, it is a median nerve, MNOP. The Navin sign, Oshner's clasp, the pointing index, Pope's benediction, pen test, and the ape thumb. And then you have Hutchison's triad. You do not have congenital hearing loss. You have SNH, interstitial keratitis, and Hutchison's teeth, which are the incisors, not the mulberry molars. You have the Kasowitz rule with congenital syphilis. Okay, we have the Kasowitz rule. Right. 
so yes uh, that was uh, about the today's session no these are not the inict pyqs right these are like the important topics that i've discussed uh, so that's why if you see the title of the session is your uh, neat pg and next kbmd it's not your inict final stroke okay so thank you so much everyone for joining in i'll share the pdf on the telegram group i hope you have found this useful okay and uh, yes uh, definitely uh, keep studying keep revising and keep winning and if you have any queries related to your preparation you can ask that as well just in these last days for the students appearing for inict focus on the previous year questions see the previous year questions and the related topics again and again do your short shots so uh, the short shot need pg and the short shot inict as well right focus on the previous year questions very very important right that is very very important for inict so thank you so much everyone i'll see the students on the plus basically for the short shot inict subscribers at 5 pm for dedicated inict pyqs uh, rapid revision like this okay so see you at 5 pm till then goodbye take care and keep studying, keep revising, and keep winning. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.